Hello, it's another edition of Plus Report, a compilation of the stories and events that made the news recently. Welcome, I'm Jacinta Obiuko. The quest and argument for restructuring have been making the rounds. As President Mohamed Bari has said, those calling for restructuring of the country have nothing to say. This has elicited reactions as the Public Secretary of the Northern Elders Forum, Hakim Baba Ahmed, says the Nigerian citizens have a constitutional right to make their voices heard. Plus TV Africa's correspondent, Destiny Momo, has more. The calls for restructuring in Nigeria has been reverberating. Most recently is the response of President Mamadou Buhari, which has brought about various reactions from experts. The president's comments uh, suggest either of two things. Either the president is uh, grossly misinformed uh, or uh, he is informed but he's taking an extremely negative position on a matter that he should be positively disposed towards. People were threatening, oh, if there's no restructuring, there's no... All of that is just hot air. They're just talking. Nothing will come out of it. The only way to make things happen is to get the buy-in of your National Assembly members, to get the buy-in of your governors. They must look at Nigeria first and not their political parties. A cross-section of Nigerians believes that if Nigeria is truly restructured, it will bring governance closer to the people. It will bring out the best in all the regions than going to the center every month to collect uh, stipends. No where power is or anything is not the problem we have in Nigeria. At least the former capital was Lagos State before it was moved to Abuja and still, we are still in fact, it's even getting more worse. Analysts say the democratically elected president should consider the yearnings of the unelected, insisting that those in power should be careful as to how the citizens are treated so Nigerians' fledgling democracy can grow stronger. They speak on measures to be taken in order to move forward. We start converting the people who are representing us and hope that they can buy into you know, what we're saying. Perhaps the security situation in the, in the country is beginning to make people rethink, you know, no longer strictly along party lines, but more along, you know, some you might say regional lines or along survival lines. The constitutional amendments that are going on now are clear, clearly inadequate to accommodate and um, deal with the issue of basic restructuring of the country. Recall that President Mamadou Buhari had recently described those demanding restructuring as being naive and mischievously dangerous. Destiny Momo for Plus TV Africa. The group also opined that every Nigerian long for a country where they can be proud to live in, where everyone and every group are treated as equals. However, this has not been the case since the country secured its independence from the Britain in 1960. Now to environmental matters. In pursuit of its mission to conserve nature and curb indiscriminate deforestation, the Nigerian Conservation Foundation has embarked on a tree planting project in schools in Lagos State, starting with Eko Akete Senior Grammar School. The trees planted on school grounds, according to them, would also provide opportunities for environmental education, as well as getting young children to think about environmental conservation early. Plus TV Africa's correspondent Uchechi Obwehidano was there and now brings us the report. In a bid to protect and restore forests for their vital role in removing atmospheric greenhouse gases, a non-governmental organization, Nigerian Conservation Foundation, has had a tree planting session where they sensitized students and staff on the need to keep the environment green. Head of Environmental Education, Abidemi Balogun, stated the mission of the fund. We are doing other ecosystem restoration activities in other locations, but we felt working with school will also bring it down to the school children and also make them aware of the impacts of um, climate change. So 
the trees planted will serve the purpose of um, shade and then fruit when it's, uh, it's um, fully matured and it also helps to combat um, climate change. The principal of Eko Akete Senior Grammar School expressed his happiness with the new development. The tree planting has really uh, encouraged a better and healthy environment, particularly for the school, uh, school system. The students find it very conducive to play, sit, and they also engage themselves meaningfully and academically with this new uh, environment. The students had also learned the importance and what they will be doing to save the environment going forward. The effect of tree planting is so, is so necessary because as far as the survival of living organism is concerned, tree planting is essential because it helps to prevent depletion of ozone layer. It also provides oxygen which is necessary for human beings to breathe. We should help watering them like daily, on a daily basis, like twice in a day. And also, we should not, you should not pluck the leaf anyhow, and we should help to maintain them by, when um, one is removed, we should help by putting another one back, like reforesting it back. The community-based afforestation tree planting advocacy program has indeed created a lot of awareness, and the citizens are adapting to this new motive. Uchechi Ugwehi Daniel, reporting for Plus TV Africa. The tree planting campaign is a part of the country's efforts to tackle climate change in Nigeria and it is ideal for trees to be planted to provide the much needed shade as well as create a more pleasant and friendly environment for school children to play. To access declaration report now, in an earlier move, the Central Bank of Nigeria in 2016 ordered workers in all the 19 deposit money banks in the country to declare their assets in an anti-corruption crusade in the banking industry. In this report, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission has issued a final warning to top executives of banks to submit their assets declaration forms. This is coming after the initial deadline of June 14 was disobeyed. A legal practitioner believes the EFCC is serious this time around about punishing bank executives if they fail to comply. Details in this report. The chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Abdurashid Bawa, has written a reminder to top bank executives, giving them till the end of June to comply with an order to declare their assets. This follows an initial warning given to the bankers in line with the Bank Employees Act 1986, which was disobeyed. The executive chairman of Center for Anti-Corruption and Open Leadership, Debo Adenuron, who was on the Plus TV breakfast show, spoke on what the EFCC on that bar can do differently to ensure compliance as the act has been in place for many years. The EFCC on that bar should activate the instrumentality of school mode that is the special control unit against money laundering and ensure that every corporate organization registers under that uh, platform. He also spoke on how we can fix the processes that makes it easy to steal. So most of these people in the private sector, sector and other professionals, I mentioned it the other time, like uh, lawyers, like accountants, like bankers, like estate um, developers. They help these people to loan their money. So all of these people should be under perpetual watch of the anti-corruption agency. There should be inter-agency cooperation. On his part, a legal practitioner says that these bank executives will face the consequences if they fail to comply, and the excuses they've been given won't be considered again. At the end of this month, because most of the bank directors have already given excuse that the, the courts were uh, not in section for two months. That, that is true, actually. And as such, they could not notarize uh, some of the, the documents that requires them because they are supposed to be under oath and all that. That is tenable, but now the courts have opened and then they have between now and the end of the month to do that. Whoever fails to do it, then the EFCC will have the uh, legal uh, authority to prosecute that person. The Bank Employees Act has been in place for more than 35 years, but was hardly enforced. 
This allowed bankers to declare whatever they want or not declare at all. But the EFCC is now demanding total compliance. For Plus TV Africa, Gozika or HSC. Well, findings show that well over 120 managing directors, deputy managing directors and executive directors of 19 deposit money banks are affected by the EFCC's order. Now, barely six months after the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, suspended its nine-month industrial action, there are threats of another strike. This development often makes students weary as they have to go through disruption in their academic calendar and lots more. Plus TV Africa's correspondent Uche Chibuihidano went into the University of Lagos to feel the pause of the students. Here is the report. Ovaha Uvukiru Salem and Ayola Akinayo are ambitious and determined 200 level students of the University of Lagos who have been hit hard by the storms of ASU's indefinite strikes. They anticipated finishing school at the stipulated four years given to them for their course of study, but the federal government still has scores to settle with the union. Many other students find themselves in Salem and Akianyo's shoes. They have spent at least one more year than they should have and fear that they could spend even more time on campus. Salem and Ayo have their hearts torn apart after the news of this latest threat. I don't think you should be going on strike. On this particular um, non-teaching strike or cause in academic whatever, I don't think you should be going on strike just to get attention of the government. You should look for other means to get attention of the If you want us to strike with you, we will help you go and carry placards. We will march to, uh, to just still teach us. Finding that the government is probably not standing on what they had promised the ASU guys is making all of this come up again and it's very, very sad. I understand the um, academic staffs are fighting for our rights and their rights indirectly because if you don't pay them well, they won't teach us well. And that's not going to be nice enough. However, they are, they are keeping us waiting for years that we cannot account for. A lecturer of the Department of Political Science, Ebenezer Ishola, justified ASO's stand on the decision of the strike. Generally, the issues are clear on the reason why there, there are talks about strike in the air. But I also say, well, strikes are there as the last resort for ASO. ASO would not just wake up one morning and say we we'll decide to go on strike. There must have been a series of engagements that are yet to you know, produce the desired fruit. That's why you have this talk. So what we have now let me just say it's a matter of announcements, it's a matter of town crying. Sadly, about 1.2 million students studying at Nigeria's public universities might have the academic calendar disrupted again, and this will gravely affect their academic pursuits. Uchechi Ugwehi Daniel, reporting for Plus TV Africa. A research observed that frequent strikes have adverse effects on the academic performance of students and recommendations were made for adequate measures to put in place by the government and the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, among others, to check incessant strike in the educational system. You're watching Plus Report. There is more after this break. 